I'm gonna lay it out straight for you. Trying to purchase a house without a deposit in Australia can be a very difficult thing to do. However, it is still possible, and so in today's episode, I wanna show you seven different ways you can purchase a property without a deposit. Hey, I'm Ryan from onproperty.com.au, your daily dose of property education and inspiration. And there are many reasons why you might want to purchase a house without a deposit. It might be that you have no money and therefore you need to buy it without a deposit, otherwise you can't afford to buy a house at all. It might be that you've just paid down debt or it could be that you simply don't want to invest your own money into the deal because you believe you can grow faster if you can work out how to purchase property with little or no deposit. There are many different reasons you may want to invest. That doesn't necessarily matter to me. What I want to identify for you is how you can buy a house without a deposit. The first method is called an equity loan. Now this does require that you own a property already. So an equity loan would be used probably for an investment property or maybe for a second house that you're going to move into or a holiday house or something like that. But an equity loan works in the fact that you, your first property needs to have gone up in value so much that you have equity in that loan. Now, if you want to find out what exactly is equity, what's Ryan talking about here, well, I'll provide a link in the description below or at onproperty.com.au forward slash 245 and you can see exactly what equity is if you don't know what it is already. But basically, equity is the difference between the mortgage that you owe and what the property is actually worth. And you can actually access that, increase your loan, borrow that money and purchase another property with that money. So if you already have a property, maybe it's your own house, maybe it's an investment property and it's gone up in value, well then speak to your mortgage broker and consider borrowing equity in order to purchase your next property. The way most people do it is they actually borrow the equity and they take it in cash and they then go and use that cash as a deposit for their second property rather than what's called cross collateralization, which is where you actually kind of mix the security of the two loans together because that can be very difficult to get out of in the future when you want to sell one property or you want to do some interesting things with your finance. So speak to your mortgage broker about that one. If you don't have a mortgage broker, go to onproperty.com.au forward slash mortgage to get my broker's details, Brad the broker who I highly recommend. The second method to get a property without a deposit is a family pledge guarantor loan. Now, I did cover this in detail with Brad. Again, links below or at onproperty.com.au forward slash 245. And we talked exactly what a family pledge guarantor loan is, how you can go about getting one, but I'm going to cover it in short in today's episode. But basically, what a guarantor family pledge loan is, is your family member, so maybe it's your parents, your grandparents, or your brother or your sister, something like that, generally needs to be immediate family, will actually put up some security for you to purchase your investment property. And rather than put up the security for the whole property, which is what used to happen in the past, they only need to put up the security for the deposit that you don't have up to 20%. And so you borrow 100% from the loan, which is secured by your property, but 20% of that loan is also secured against another property that your family member owns. So this basically counteracts the fact that the bank is taking a higher risk in you, lending you more money, well they now have more security to offset that money that they're lending. So your family members do need to have a property that they can put up as security. The good thing about family pledge loans is if your property goes up in value or you pay down the debt, you can actually get your family's property removed as security and so just your property is secured against it once you get to that 80% loan to value ratio. The third method is owner finance. This is very common in the US but not so common in Australia but still completely possible. Owner finance is when the seller of the property actually provides you with the finance rather than a bank. In a general transaction, you will go to the bank, you will borrow the money for the property, you'll have your deposit as well, you'll then take that cash and you will give it to the seller and they'll give you the title deeds or they'll give the bank the title deeds until you pay off with the bank. But with owner finance, you cut the bank out of it completely. You go to the seller and you say, I'd like to buy your property off you. You provide the finance to me and I'll pay you back over time. And so the owner will provide finance to you. They'll keep the title deed, but you will own the property contracts and stuff like that. And then when you finish paying it off, 
you will then receive the title deed and effectively own the property. But by buying through owner finance, it's very similar to regular finance in that you will have control of that property, be able to rent it out and do whatever it is you want to do with it. However, you'll have a loan with the person who originally owned the property. So that's owner finance in a nutshell. Fourth method is by doing a joint venture. So you might not have a deposit, but you might earn a good income. You might not have a deposit, but you might have skills when it comes to investing in property. You might be a tradie or you might have some handyman skills or you might be able to find positive cash flow property like I can, but you might not have that deposit. Well, what you can do is joint venture with someone else, partner up with them, and if they have the deposit, you can go Harvey's in the property or you can work out whatever arrangement is you want to work out. It is up to you how you negotiate that. But basically, your joint venture partner would provide the deposit, potentially some financing help as well, and then you would provide the financing or you would provide some legwork that's going to increase the property in value. Basically, it's beneficial for both of you, but you're providing different things and you don't have to provide any deposit. Method number five is to buy a really, really, really cheap house. Like I listed inside on property plus a couple of months ago just to show people that they exist. It wasn't positive cash flow, but just to show people that they do exist a piece of land for $3,000. $3,000 for a piece of land. Granted, the land was in the middle of nowhere. There was no road to it. It was kind of very difficult to get to. There was no sewage lines, no electricity, nothing like that. You couldn't live on the land, okay? But it was $3,000. I've seen land, I've seen houses uh, in the back of nowhere under $50,000, $40,000, $30,000 for a completely run down house. You could potentially purchase a really cheap property using the money that you have. A lot of people are trying to save a deposit and can't quite save enough. Well, maybe you want to buy a $3,000 block of land or a $10,000 block of land, which isn't going to be as dodgy and you can provide that money up front. Now, obviously, um, you're going to have some deposit. But there is a circumstance where you may have credit card or you may be able to get a personal loan or something that is unsecured to go ahead and do that. Now, I'm not going to recommend this. I'm never going to recommend that people get credit card debt or unsecured loans in order to do it. I'm just saying it can be done. I'm not saying you should do it or it's a wise financial decision because it's probably not. But you can do it. And if you absolutely know what you're doing, then that could be an option for you. The sixth method is what's called property syndicates. And so rather than you saving the full deposit yourself, investing in the property and having 100% ownership, you join a property syndicate where a bunch of different people come together to purchase an investment property. There's a smaller investment amount on your part and it may be possible for you to purchase a property without a deposit, assuming that you can get finance for something like that. Property syndicates did get a bad name because there was some dodgy stuff happening, I think, back in the 90s or the early 2000s where people got screwed over. So just make sure that you really do your research into the syndicate that you're investing in before you go ahead and invest in it. And if you want more detail about what a property syndicate is, go to onproperty.com.au forward slash syndicate and I'll redirect you to a blog post that I've already done about property syndicates. And the seventh method is property options. And this is a very complicated topic and something I'm not going to go into great detail. If you want to learn this in detail, go to rickotton.com. So R-I-C-K-O-T-T-O-N.com, Australian guy who invests using this method and is very successful at it. He's going to be your best teacher. But an option is basically where you go and you provide someone with a benefit, so maybe a couple of grand up front, to have the option to purchase their property if you want to at a dedicated price within a certain time frame. So if that sounds confusing to you, then it's probably not the best strategy for you. But if options make sense to you, then potentially you could go out and you could purchase an option on a property. And if that property then goes up in value, well, then you may be able to purchase the property at the price set in your option and get the full finance for it because it's worth so much more. Now, this is going to be tricky with finance because banks like to err on the safe side. So you are going to need to really work out how this is done before you go ahead and do it. But it is a possibility. So if you are someone who's very gung-ho, willing to go out and make people's offers to have an option on their property, then this could be something that could work for you. And the eighth method, which I really don't want to talk about, but people are going, um, I have read about it in the forums, is that you can actually get... Uh, potentially get unsecured personal loans 
to help fund your deposit. Now, most lenders at the moment really want to see 5% savings before they're willing to lend you any money. So in most circumstances, this isn't going to work. But I have heard of people who have secured, got unsecured personal loans to help them with the deficit between their deposit and the property that they want to purchase. Again, not something I'm recommending because it is very risky to have that high level of interest and to have all of those loans. If you don't have a deposit, maybe it means that you should step back and you should look at saving your deposit or you should go back to the last episode where we talked about the things that you can do now if you can't really afford to save a deposit at the moment. And actually the ninth method, which I should list, is that you can actually get a gift from a family member and purchase a property that way. So they gift you the deposit and you probably need a statutory declaration or a stat deck to go along with that but they gift you the money and you can then use that money to buy a property. Many parents do this with their children that will give them money to get into the property market and so it's a very common thing that you could do. Get a gift and use that to buy a property. If you've got generous parents like that, good on you. I wish you all the best. So that finishes off for me today. Seven different ways that you can buy a property without a deposit is much harder to do, especially here in Australia, to buy a property without a deposit. However, it is still possible, so you don't need to give up. And if you want to get access to my checklist to help you understand how much of a deposit you need to save and get you on the path to saving your deposit, go to onproperty.com.au forward slash save. You can enter your email and get access to that absolutely free. So until tomorrow, stay positive.